Good morning. It's time to start this morning. Boys, why don't you come on up front? I can't see you too well back there. Come on front. We're going to start our lesson this morning. Amen. I'm glad to have you here this morning. Boys, you ready to do some learning today? Yeah, good. We're going to start with a song. You know this one? Salvation. S-A-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. We're going to learn how to spell salvation by the end of this song. All right, we'll sing it together. Everybody stand with me if you're able. No, you can't get to heaven without S-A-L. You can have a seat. <clears throat> All right, well, our passage today is in Luke chapter 12, verses 49 through 53. Now, we're still in a section where Jesus is doing some teaching. And we're going to listen to Jesus doing some teaching today. So you don't want, do you want to hear what Jesus was teaching? Yeah. Yeah, well, let's find out. First, before we get to the, what the passage says, and we're going to talk about some of these things. Did most of the world love or hate Jesus when he was here? Hate him. How do you know that? Yeah, they tried to stone him. They tried to kill him. And then what ended up happening? On the cross. They killed him, right? On the cross. They crucified him. Now, of course, there were some people that loved Jesus, that believed in him and turned to him. But for the most part, the world hated Jesus. What about today? The world. Yeah, the world still hates Jesus. And here's something we're going to learn today. If the world hates me as a Christian, is it me that they hate or is it Jesus? It's Jesus. The world hates me for following Jesus. This is something that's important for us to learn, especially even in things we're dealing with in our own world today, that the ideas, the teachings of Jesus, the word of God, the message of God, even just obeying him, loving God, and following him, that some people are going to hate us for that. You know... Some people like to say, you get saved and life is going to be great. And Jesus says, you get saved and, and sometimes even your own mother or father might turn away from you. It's going to cause division. It's going to be hard. But it's worth it following Jesus, isn't it? So the question is, am I willing to follow Jesus no matter what? No matter what other people do or what other people say, Am I willing to follow Jesus no matter what? And along with that, then, how much do I love Jesus? 
Well, if I love Jesus, I'm going to follow him no matter what, right? All right, so let's look at the passage here. It says, Jesus says, I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So, in this passage, Jesus says, I'm come to send fire on earth. Now, did he send, like, literal, like, fire to burn up the earth? No. One day, the earth will be destroyed, but he's talking about division. Jesus said, you think I'm come here to bring peace. Did Jesus come to make everybody peaceful and just, just everybody get along? No, he didn't come to do that. He came to save us from our sins, didn't he? Now, when I choose to follow Jesus, just as we see here in this picture, right? That means that I come to the cross and I repent of my sin, my sinful ways, and I turn to Jesus, right? And I trust Jesus as my Savior and I follow him. But does everybody do that? Does everybody trust Christ as their Savior? No, they don't. What do some people do when we follow Jesus? Does everybody like it that I'm a Christian and I'm telling them about Jesus and telling them to get saved? No, not everybody does. In fact, sometimes even our own family, and that's what Jesus is talking about. What does it look like to follow Jesus? How do you follow Jesus, boys? Starts with getting saved, right? And what about after that? (laughs) Baptize, read your Bible, and pray, sure. Obeying him, right? Doing what he he says, following his way, his word. That's right, exactly. Witnessing and telling others about him. And that's what it means to, to follow Jesus, but Jesus said... I've come to bring division. What he means is that sometimes somebody gets saved and even their own family turns against them because they hate God that much. And they don't want to have anything to do with that person. Do you remember, was it uh, two weeks ago, Miss Beth was talking about someone in China that, that she got saved and she got locked out of her room at college. Do you remember that? Because she got saved. That's the exact kind of thing we're talking about. Now I have something I want to show you here. And I want to read some, something to you. I got the wrong thing. Well, let me get my uh, right piece of paper here. Alright. <clears throat> so. Um, this right here. Is a family that uh, re- recently here, I, if you go on uh, Voice of the Martyrs, they have some prayer requests for different Christians that are being persecuted for their faith. So, but this here, this mother and daughter, they were rejected for their Christian faith. The, the, the husband, he turned away and turned the family. They got saved and they trusted Jesus as their Savior and he kicked them out. And just put them out of the, fo- the home. And even their parents and their family turned their backs on them. Did you know that there's some places where they'll even have a funeral for someone? And when they get saved, when they become a Christian, because they might as well be dead. That's how much some people hate God and hate Christians. And this is what Jesus was talking about. Jesus said, some people aren't going to like the fact that you're a Christian. 
Now, <laughs> there are those that would like to say, well, when I become a Christian, I, life is great and everything is good. And Jesus said, no, that's not necessarily the case. But is God always good? Yes. God's always good, right? Even when other people aren't. Even when life is rough. And we can have joy because we're following God and following His way. But we have to make that determination. Boys, even when you're your age, and the rest of us even now, are we going to follow God no matter what the world says, no matter what others say? Are we going to do right? Are we going to obey Him even when others hate us? Because Jesus said people are going to. He told us they will. So, Here's our question then. Am I willing to follow Jesus no matter what? This isn't, you know, to, to, to think about this, to say, well, people are going to hate you. It's not exactly the most cheerful message, is it? But it's the truth. And it's important for us to know that people aren't going to like what we do and how we follow God. But that's okay. Who are we here to, to please? People or God? God, that's right. And one day we'll have a reward in heaven. But even on this earth, even if other people are against us, we're going to follow him. How much do I love Jesus? Do I love him enough to follow him even when others are against me? When others tell me, make fun of me for following him? All right, well... Let's pray, and then uh, we'll have our piano player come, and then, boys, you can go and sit with your family. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for allowing us to be able to be here today. Lord, help guide us and help us as we uh, seek to honor and glorify you this morning as we worship and praise you, that you alone would be honored today. And Lord, through the teaching and preaching of your word this day, that it would affect our hearts and our lives. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can go ahead. Good morning, glad you're with us here today. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. That's what we're going to be looking at talking about today. Let's go ahead and go through some of our announcements this morning. We are on week 32 of our Bible reading program. And I hope you're, you're keeping up on that. You get a little bit behind, and boy, does it take some work to get caught up, doesn't it? <clears throat> this week, we have our ladies' meeting Tuesday at the church at 1.30 p.m., and the hostess is Sharon, and the roll call word is heat. Hopefully, we're getting to the end of the heat around here. Mm -hmm. I hope so. All right, and then as we look at our schedules here this week, uh, we do have a couple birthdays, August 9th, Sharon, and August 12th, Rudy. And then special music for next week, August 15th, is Sky and Nikki, and cleaning this week, August 8th, is the J. Mudge family. All right, 
I think that's all I have for announcements this morning. So men, if you would come. Brother, would you pray for the offering? Heavenly Father, we've been before you this morning and thank you for the blessing and gift we have to be able to give back. As you so abundantly provide things for us, we just thank you for it and we thank you that you have the privilege to give back in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for that this morning. Let's say together our memory verse. For, we have a new memory verse and a new song of the month to learn. So stand with me this morning if you're able. And let's say this one together. Job 23.10 is the verse. All right, here we go. Job 23.10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Once more. Job 23.10 But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Amen. Remain standing. Hymn number 168 as we begin this morning. 168 <laughs> My sin I pursue. 
forsake thy cross I will take now thy servant dear Lord make of me As we continue this morning, please turn to hymn number 455. I am resolved, 455. As we continue, let's turn in our hymn books to hymn number 473. 473. Then 
believe we'll have our scripture reading at this time. Our scripture reading this morning is in Luke chapter 12, verses 49 through 53. As you find that, please stand with me. Luke 12, 49 through 53. I'll read if you would follow along silently. I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Amen. Remain standing. For our final hymn, let's turn to hymn number 399. 399. A wonderful old camp song. before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go that as you say it. You may be seated. All right. You can take your Bibles to Luke chapter 12 verses 49 through 53. Luke 12, 49 through 53. Not of this world. We're going to talk about today, we've been talking about in Luke 12, about some, some things going on, uh, about the fact that we should value the eternal things and not the things of this life. And today we're going to talk about some of the consequences that can come from that, some of the results that can come from that, and we're going to talk about our resolve to follow God, to value Him, to choose His way, no matter what. So, bear with me today. I'm still dealing with the fatigue of camp, but I'm looking out here today and I'm seeing, I think we're all a bit tired today, aren't we? I don't know if it's the weather or whatnot, but let's, let's just uh, seek the Lord as we go into this here and uh, seek that the Lord would help us to, to be able to uh, take away from this what he wants. Lord, I just ask that you would be with us this morning, give us strength and energy and help us, Lord, to hear what you have to say, Lord, that you would be with me and 
use me, give me the words, Lord, because I need, uh, need your words today and just ask that you would be honored and glorified in this. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we've been talking in Luke chapter 12 about valuing the eternal, we've looked at many different aspects of that, even down to uh, worry. Uh, it began the passage, or the, the chapter here, talking about doing what is right no matter what others say, no matter what the consequences are, even through persecution. And now we're getting to the end, and he's reminding again that there's going to be division is the word that is used in this passage. And there's going to be persecution and there's going to be hardships because of the fact that we are following God and God's way and because we are valuing him and the eternal things. So... Our application question this morning then is this. What am I willing to endure for my values? Now, here's, here's an interesting thing to me. Jesus is speaking to the disciples, but as well to, there's a crowd, and he's going to turn in the next passage specifically to the crowd. And, but so far, he's, right now, he's talking to those that are the disciples and those that are around him. Now, if I'm trying to, to sell you on something and trying to promote, this is the way that, that you should go. This is the religion that you should follow. How do you think that would start out, that pitch? Would it start out with, uh, would it start out with, you know what, you choose this life, it's going to be hard and people are going to hate you? Or would it start out with, you, you go my way, the way I'm trying to tell you, and things are going to be great. You're going to have a great life. Right? That's how it would start. And there are those out there today that seek that message. There are those health and wealth gospel and many of the preachers even that you see on, on, some, on television and things. They're telling you how, you know, if you follow God, then you're just, it's going to be a, for a, a great life and God's just going to bless you and things are going to go your way and, and God's going to bless you with money and you're going to have a great life. And listen, I'm not try, today saying that the life that we choose, the life of following Christ, isn't going to be a life that's blessed, right? right. To follow Christ is a blessed life, right? Amen? Amen? But, if we're focused on eternal things, instead of temporal things, the blessings then, are they probably going to be more eternal or temporal? They're going to be eternal blessings, aren't they? Jesus is trying to focus our, our shift the way that we think. This is key, this eternal thinking, because what he's going to bring out here is, and we're going to get to in a moment, but he, he's saying those that follow Christ are going to have those that in their own family that, that reject them because they're following me, because they're following God's way. If following God then was just about having a great life, then it, it wouldn't be worth it. But as we've been looking at this passage here, the idea is to shift our focus from the temporal of this life to the eternal, right? So if I'm focused on the eternal, the temporal things... The things in this world, the relation, even, even the way people treat me in this world, I can endure those things because I have a purpose in God. Because I have a meaning that comes in God. I have, I have fulfillment in Him and following His way and, and being a part of His family. And knowing that one day I will be rewarded for those things. So these things that come to us in this life persecution and, and rejection and even as he talks about father against son, family against family. 
these things can be endured. These things aren't going to stop me if I'm focused on the eternal. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter what other people say about me. What matters to me only is what God says about me. And so then I can endure those things. Now, like I said, there are those, the, the, the health and wealth gospel is kind of what we call it. Of you follow Jesus and things will go great. And even, you know, even you, you, you read, um, not, not that I'm say, criticizing or saying don't do those things, but you, you know, some Christian media even, books and movies and things, <laughs> one of the things that comes up in those a lot is, is your, things aren't going well in your life and then you follow God and then things are going great. And that's, that's, that's a good message. But sometimes when we follow God, things don't go great for us, do they? Sometimes the, it seems like the world falls, around, falls down around us. I have to admit, it... Um, to me, hearing about some of the Chinese uh, people, that uh, the, the believers, that some of the things that they endure, and not just them, but other countries, those in, in persecuted countries, not just from their government, but from their own family, from people uh, around them, from their so-called friends and family, and yet... There is joy. There can be joy even in those circumstances. So Jesus is saying, I'm not coming here to bring peace that everybody would get along. I'm coming to bring division. And this is what he's saying in that. There's going to be division because some are going to follow me and some are not. And those that don't follow me are going to hate those that do because they hate me. That's the, the, the main idea of what we're getting to here. So let's, let's go ahead and get right into this passage. As we look at the passage here, there's really one key word. There's not necessarily a phrase that I would use, you could, but there's a word that comes up and then there's actually a couple words, but they're all kind of meaning the same thing here, referring to the same thing. Division. Division is the word. So as we go through the passage here, if you're like me, you'll circle it or underline it or highlight one of those things. Now there's a couple other words that are used. There's fire, and then there's against, all bringing together the same idea. So as we go through this passage, then be looking for that word, and it's going to help unlock the passage to us. So if we look at verse 49... The word there then is fire. Jesus says, I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled? So I'll admit to you, this passage is one that um, you, you, you read it and think, okay, this is pretty simple. But then you start looking at it and thinking about it. And Jesus says he's coming to bring fire on the earth. Well, did he bring fire on the earth? I mean, was there a great fire when he was on the earth? No. So what does he mean by the fire? And the truth of the matter is, I, 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 I look, this is one of those things where I wanted to dig a little bit deeper in this and what, what exactly is he speaking of? Because I've got what I think, what makes sense to me. And so I began looking at some other verses I even looked at some commentaries and I looked at a, well, I looked at about six different commentaries as to what the fire is that he's referring to here. I looked at six different commentaries and I got about seven different opinions. <laughs> the truth is it doesn't say, but one of the things you got to consider and be careful about when you're looking at uh, so, some of the commentators and people that, that really get dig into the some of these things in the word some of these guys like to really get into the the minutia the what does the word mean in the original language and and I'm not saying those are bad things but sometimes I remember one of the things I was taught in my science classes is when you're trying to uh, trying to discern something and parse the information and look at try and figure out what you're looking at don't be so focused on the single tree that you don't see the whole forest. 
really that's a context thing. In other words, what's everything else talking about? And so many that I looked at tried to separate verses 49 and 50 from the rest of the passage here, the rest of this paragraph. But I don't think you can. I think that they're together and they're linked. Jesus, because he breaks from what he was saying in verses 41 through 48 and moves here then to 49 and uh, through 53. So here's what, as I've studied, here's what I've come to in this, and it, it uh, makes sense, and I'm uh, looking at other verses and things. Um, he says, I'm come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? So the fire that he's going to come and bring to the earth, he's saying it's already kindled. The fire's already started. The fire that he's talking about is the division that he's talking about. Later, a couple verses later, he says, Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. So that verse, 51, links back to 49. I'm come to bring fire, and it's already kindled. You think I'm come to bring peace? No, I'm come to bring division. Now, you go, wait a minute, Jesus. Pretty sure I remember reading at Christmas something about peace on earth. <laughs> so what do you mean you're come to bring division? Well, it depends on what you mean by peace. The peace that God brings, the peace that passes understanding, the peace from our sin, right? The forgiveness of sin the peace that comes in knowing him. But there's, there's a thing out there in t today, and it's not just today, obviously, because Jesus is talking about this, because the, uh, the disciples and the, the religious leaders, oh, he's come to bring peace. He's come to, to oh, take us out from under the control of the Roman government and give us, there's going to be peace on earth and we're all just going to get along. But Jesus has come to bring truth, right? 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 Truth. Truth divides, doesn't it? Yeah, because those, there's those that are going to follow the truth and those that are not. So this, in, in this way, he brings peace in our hearts, but... That is going to bring division because there are some that are going to believe and some that are not. Now, there's a few things I want to talk about this and some verses to look at, but let's just work our way through the passage here now that we're understanding. The fire he's talking about is the fire of division. And really, it was already kindled. Who kindled it? In a sense, the, uh, John the Baptist got things started, didn't he? That was his job, to get people to begin to repent and, and uh, the, the Pharisees and, and their teachings, they're the ones that are, the, the fire is blazing and they're really, uh, really causing much of these divisions here. So, as we look then, verse 50, But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? So, let's... let's parse this and to look at this here. Jesus says, I have a baptism to be baptized with. Is he talking about when he was baptized in the river? No. Why do we say that? Well, this is Luke 12, and that happened earlier on, didn't it? That's already happened. So what's the baptism that he's talking about? Well, it's pretty obvious. He's talking, he said he will be baptized, He's talking about his death on the cross, right? The baptism, it really, in a sense, if you think about baptism as being immersed, he was immersed in that suffering, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Not just a little bit. So I, he says, I have a baptism to, be, baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Straightened, he's, he's, he's burdened about it. He's, 
he, he, he just he can't get away from it. He's, we see in the Bible the night before, he prayed all night long, and we see that even <laughs> there were drops of blood. And so this is all, I believe, referring to the division that's going to come. And Jesus is saying here, I'm going to be persecuted to, I'm going to be put to death. You follow me, there's going to be division. But don't be disheartened by that division. Don't be surprised by it. And understand that there are those in the world that are going to hate you. But here's the question. Is it worth it? Is it worth it to follow God even though others are going to hate me? That's the question. Are we saying yes this morning? I hope that we are. Now I want to look into some of these things. But let's continue going on here. So he says, verse 51, Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. Now this idea, this, what he's saying here, this peace on earth. If everybody in the earth believes, believes a lie, something that is not true, if everyone believes the lie, is there going to be peace on earth? Well, in a sense, there will be. We're not going to fight because we all believe the same lie, right? right, right. What am I talking about? I'm thinking about things like communism, right? Where they force you to, you to believe our propaganda and you believe what, and everybody has to buy into this. And everybody does, and then there will be peace. Well, that's not really how it ends up working anyway, but... Here's the point that I'm making. Jesus' end goal isn't peace on earth. Oh, let's just all get along. You believe this and I believe that. You know, and, and this is one of these things that I think we've got to be careful of in the church. Because even in the church there's people, well, you, you believe you know, the, the Catholic and the Lutheran and the Baptist and you, you believe this thing and I believe that thing and we just all need to get along and God, Jesus is a, God wants us to be peaceful and wants us to just, just, we just need to love Jesus and love each other and just get along. And Jesus said, no, I'm not come to bring peace but rather division. There is going to be division and there are going to be those that, that are against us because of what we value, because that we follow God. Understand that, accept it, and understand that following God is so worth it, and that God will be there with us. So Jesus says in verse fifty-two: For from henceforth there shall be five on one in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. Now, just like that, that family that I showed this morning with the kids, um, that the, the mother and the kids got saved and the father threw them out. That's what he's talking about. Now, that, it may look a little bit different to us in this country, but if there are those out here today that have gotten saved, especially gotten saved out of a family that was not Christians and gotten saved even as they're older... There is a division that comes, isn't there? Even those, I grew up in a Christian home, but I have relatives that they don't want to have anything to do with God or the Bible, and they don't, don't even like it when, we, when I bring it up. And there's a division there, right? And it's unfortunate, and it's sad, but we need to focus on the eternal things and focus on following God's way and there's a reason the division comes, and it has to do with our heart. It has to do with what it is that we value. Now, I, I keep saying I want to get to that because I'm, I'm going to get myself sidetracked and ahead of myself here. So, father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, and the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, and the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against the mother 
mother-in-law, you get the picture, right? It's kind of an et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So on and so on. Uh, whatever the relationship, they're going to be turned against the other. Why? Because one has come to see the truth. One has come to see the value of God and God's way. Come to accept Christ as their Savior. <clears throat> Division, divided, divided and against are our words here. Now, I touched on this. We're going to look at some verses here and then I want to bring this out here. Why then, why is it that the world hates it when I become a Christian? Now we say, well, yeah, because, because the world hates God. The world hates Jesus. But what about, what about in parts of the world that they don't, I, let's say, for instance, atheists. They don't believe in God, right? Why does it bother atheists so much that we Christians do believe? I mean, it doesn't bother them that people believe in Santa Claus, right? I don't see rallies and billboards and signs and people spending millions of dollars to prove that Santa Claus doesn't exist and calling people fools for believing in Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny or whatever. It doesn't bother them that we believe that, that people believe in Santa Claus, but it does bother them that we believe in God. Now, if they're right and there is no God, what does it matter that I follow God? I mean, by following God, it's not exactly like uh, the God is telling me to, to do horrible things. Now, there are religions that, that do that, aren't there? And if, unfortunately, we get lumped in with some of those. But even then, even those hate us, hate Christians. So why then, even if, if they believe there is no God, why do they care that I'm obeying God? And it's not, <laughs> their people get persecuted even if they're not saved, but they, they hold the Christian values, right? That's, we've got the, uh, in our, the two-party system in our country, the Democrats and the Republicans, the conservatives and the liberals and all of that. And Right now, uh, the conservative values and, and ways are, are definitely being railed against and persecuted against, especially in the media. Why? Well, because some of the, many of those are Christian values. They are biblical values. I'm getting to a point here. So why is it that they hate us so much? Even, well, because they hate Jesus, but they don't believe in Jesus. So why is it they hate us so much? And I, I, it comes down to this. As a sinner, as someone that doesn't know Christ, in my value system, you can use the word heart, but we're going to say value system. Really, that's, it's the same thing. What it is that I value most, off the top of your head, if you had to lump the entire world together, each person, what is it that they value most? Yourself. Got it, right there. Mm -hmm. Themselves, right? That's, right? That's it. I value me. The world values self. Put me first before anyone else. Value me. Do what's going to be best for me. Help others if it does something for me. And I'm not saying that there's not some self-sacrificing things, but uh, <laughs> you find out, you get into the world, all the charities out there, so many of them, the, uh, the CEOs of the charities are, are living in million-dollar homes. I'm not sure how much self-sacrificing is going on there. But, but anyway, so the value then is on me. Me and what I want for me. So here's the difference because Jesus, we come to Jesus and that temporal viewpoint of me, all of a sudden when we get saved, it changes, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Now what I value most is not me, but God. Amen. Right? At least that's what it's supposed to be. Sometimes we get, we get turned back into the old ways sometimes and we begin to value me more than God. 
But that's idolatry, isn't it? To value something more than God. So now, instead of valuing me and my way first, I'm going to value God and God's way first. Well, as I live and I value God and God's way first, as I live that way, the world doesn't like that because it points out the error in their way. And they have, we, each of us has it within us built, built within us a conscious and a need for God, right? And so I'm pointing out simply by valuing God and God's way and the things of God first before myself. If I'm living in that way, we're not even at this point pre talking about preaching the word, just living the word. And living the selfless life, the life that is devoted to God, that puts God first, they don't understand it. And it makes them angry because it shows the selfishness of their way. And it, it, it flies in the face of their value system. And so this is what we see. Now there's some more to that and we'll get to that. Let's get to some of these pa other passages here. Micah 7, 5 through eight says, trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide, keep the doors of thy mouth from her heart, her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, mother the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies are the men of his own house. So Jesus was quoting this passage when he was talking about this. This was something that didn't even start here with Jesus in the New Testament that God said this way back in Micah. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. So here's the thing. As I begin to value God in God's way, others are going to hate me for it. Now some are going to see the light and see it's going to shine the light on their ways and Ultimately, we should be able to say, hey, look, following God's way brings this fulfillment and this purpose. Your way of following you and your selfishness, there's something missing there. It doesn't work. And some people are going to go, oh, maybe you're right. And they're going to be open to it and they're going to get saved. And then they're going to value God more than they value themselves, right? But, there are those that are going to be hostile towards that because they don't want to. They want to put them first. But in this passage here, therefore I will look unto the Lord. He says that there's, don't look to the people around you. Don't look even to your family or those in your own household. They're going to turn against you because they value self and you value God. And so when I value God and others hate me because of it, that should push me closer to God. That should push me to, to grab a hold of God in His way even stronger. Therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Whatever division and persecution and fire that comes from following God should drive me even closer to him. John 7, 41 through 43. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. And we see even early on in Jesus' ministry, even just saying where he's come from and what, really what's going on is arguing whether or not he was the Messiah. Division is caused. John 9, 16. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. John 10, 19 through 20. There was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? 
Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? If the world hate ye, hate you. Oh, excuse me, I jumped on to the next verse. So we're, we're causing division here. Jesus, simply, whether or not he's the Messiah, simply following him causes division because of exactly what I said. Because the world, those that are, are sinners, value me first and not God first. Now we know as Christians that a life lived for me is absolutely meaningless, right? It's not just about whether or not I want to go to heaven or hell. It's about whether or not I come to realize I need God. That's the thing. Each of us needs God. It's not just about salvation even. Because we need God as people. We were made to need God. We were made to glorify Him and in order to fulfill our purpose, to do what we were made for, we need to glorify him. We need to choose him. We need to choose his way. We need to value him first. When we say, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, that's what it means. Value God and act upon that value. When I love someone, love is not an emotion. Emotions come from love, they can be a part of it. But love is saying, I value you so much that I'm going to put you and your needs before me. And I'm going to make choices that put you first. That's love. No wonder the world has a problem understanding real love because the world puts me first. John 15, 18 through 21. Here is a, a, a passage that's uh, going to be of importance to this here. Jesus says here, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, because you value God, you're not of the world. We're not citizens of this world. We're not Americans. We're citizens of heaven. We talked about that Wednesday night. What was it you said, brother? Heavenites? I was going to say we're heavenians, and that didn't really work very well. We're citizens of heaven. Doesn't matter what country we're in. We're not citizens of this world. We're, we're of heaven. We're of God. But I have chosen you out of the world. We're no longer the same. We're different. Therefore, the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is no greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Now here's an interesting thing as we think about this. They persecuted Jesus and they hated him. Now Jesus is God, right? Can I get an amen? Jesus is God. Okay, and Jesus is fully human as well, right? So... <clears throat> Even though Jesus is God, was Jesus seeking to obey, to follow, to glorify him or the Father? The Father. Even though he is God, we see there that pattern of as a human, he valued God first before himself. But all these things will be done unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. They know not him that sent me. John 16, 2. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. I sort of think that when Jesus said that, he was thinking of Saul, later known as the Apostle Paul. I don't know, but it really, he really very much exemplifies that. Acts 14, 1 through 4, And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But 
the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, in part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. This isn't something that's new, this division that's going to come, the fact that the world hates us. We shouldn't scratch our head and go, why do they hate Christians so much? Well, (laughs) Jesus said that's going to be the way. That's what's going to happen. We know that that's the case. It's not something new. Acts 28, 24. And some believed the things which were spoken and some believed not. And really that's what it comes down to, isn't it? Some believed and chose God's way and some didn't. So here it is. I got it in writing. We've already talked about this. The world values self first. The world hates Christians because we value God over ourselves. And that threatens their value system. And when we live and follow God's way, follow the word, it shows God's way works. And their way doesn't. And that makes them angry because they want to follow their way and they don't want to follow God's way. I was talking even about uh, to, about some famous atheists and evolutionists uh, with someone here recently. And the, um, the thing about, the interesting thing about that is you start reading even Darwin and some of the others it's not so much that they came and observed and, oh, this is what, you know, the, observed the world. They like to portray it, that they observed the world and science and it's very, it became very clear that as they looked at the world around them that this is how it was made. No, it was less about that and it was more about, well, I don't want to follow God, so there's got to be another way. That's what it is. Listen. Atheists, no matter what they tell you, they do believe in God. Atheists would say, I don't believe in God. You can't hate something that you don't believe in. Right? Right? (laughs) They believe in God, but they don't want God. They've rejected him. So they come up with some other way. If I am following God and living in his way, it's going to cause division. It's going to divide me from those around me. There are those that are going to want to be around me and those that are not. And it might even be family members. That shouldn't weaken my resolve. That should strengthen my pull towards God. And say, you know what? I'm not of this world. And though we are blood and though we are friends and though we were family, I'm of God. And I want him. And I want his way. And I want it more now than I did before. So here's our question then. What am I willing to endure for my values? There is a truth to the idea that if I am not living out God's way through his word. If I'm not living out what his word says If I'm not living out my values, showing through my actions and my choices that I value God, in a sense, loving God. But if I'm hiding those things, I'm not going to experience the division so much. What I'm saying is, if I'm not living the way I'm supposed to, others probably aren't going to hate me and hate the way that I live. And that might be an indication to me that I'm not outwardly and openly living my faith. And here's something I've come to in studying of this. This division that Jesus is talking about. We think of division as a bad thing. Why? 
It's not necessarily a bad thing. Because it draws me closer to Him, right? What is sanctification? It's drawing closer to God, right? But what's it mean? To be set apart. Apart from what? The world. You know what is another word for that? Division. It's going to happen. The question is, are we going to draw closer to God and God's way? And understand that that's why there's division. But also understand, it doesn't mean shun and turn our back from those. It should also break our heart for the lost. To say, you, you, you got to understand, you need to see it. Your way isn't working. Your way is only going to bring death and destruction even in this life and in the life to come. If you re- continue to reject God and choose yourself. But we can't make them choose. But that's our task. To live our life valuing God and God's way. And to try and show and tell and convince others that they need to choose God's way. And they need to value him over themselves. What am I willing to endure for my values? Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for this service and this passage. And Lord, just to be able to come to you this morning and to worship and to honor and glorify you. Help us as we live our lives this week in you and we choose your ways and we choose rightly. Lord, that we understand that there are those that are not going to like the things that we do and the way that we live and the fact that we believe in you. Lord, help us to be willing to endure that. Help us, help it to draw us closer to you that we would shine your light even brighter. And we seek you in this in Jesus' name. Amen. 420 is our invitation hymn. I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? 420. As you find that, please stand. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood. I shed that thou mightst ransom me and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me as the piano continues to play if the Lord's been dealing on your heart where you stand where you you can have a seat or you can come forward but do business with the Lord this morning take care of that pray and, and seek him choose God in his way take this moment Gifts. 
to thee, what hast thou brought to me? Amen. Brother Duane, would you close us in prayer this morning?